Hello, my name is Ben Sandell, and I'm a consultant and member of CDS Consulting Co-op. This video field guide is on membership growth, and though it is oriented towards startups, many of the concepts are applicable to established co-ops interested in picking up the pace of their membership growth or who might be expanding and looking to grow membership in a certain area or population. This field guide is intended for those who are creating the plans and strategies for a membership campaign and may also be helpful for those working at the ground level to get a better understanding of the overall campaign. Member recruitment is one of the most critical aspects of startup development and also one of the most complex, requiring organization, psychology, strategy, and commitment. The points I'm about to make need to be carefully integrated into your broader plan for developing your co-op. Strategies, messaging, and actions will need to be considered and modified as your co-op moves through the stages of development. This information will be far more valuable when used in conjunction with consulting expertise as is available from CDS Consulting Co-op and Food Co-op Initiative. I'll start with six points that are important to membership growth then talk about a way to put those ideas into action and end with some more general recommendations. So let's get to it. The first point is to craft clear and compelling messages that resonate with your community. The messages should be authentic and upbeat and should be able to be repeated over and over. Your co-op should already have a vision and mission and the messages created for your membership campaigns at different stages of growth will flow from and hew to the vision and mission. People working on the campaign may create their own personal messages that reflect their own motivation for working on the co-op, but those too need to reflect and conform to the broader established co-op messaging. The next point is to use broadcasting and targeting strategies. Broadcasting is the use of tabling, social media, group emails, and any other method available to reach broad and diverse audiences to build awareness of your co-op. In addition, you need to target specific people and groups that may be of particular benefit to your co-op. These targets may be able to provide introductions to new networks of potential co-op members, or may be respected people of influence in your community. As you identify those target people and groups, brainstorm who in your team has a connection or could make an introduction to those people. That leads to point three, elicit before you solicit. That's just a fancy way of saying listen, find common ground, and share the vision before asking people to join your co-op. Point four is to set clear goals with precise deadlines, and these should be smart, specific, measurable, ambitious, yet realistic and time-bound. Saying you want a lot more members in the next few months is nowhere near as exciting as 30 new members in three weeks. The fifth idea is to meet people where they are. One way you do that is to make it as easy as possible to join your co-op. Go to the places people congregate and have membership events. Create payment plans, but make sure you keep close tabs so people make their payments. Figure out a way for people to join online, and even if you have a fairly lengthy membership agreement that needs to be signed, have an easy way for people to get the process started. Another meaning of meeting people where they are is to be aware of the different ways people grow comfortable with a new concept and provide options to move up the ladder toward joining. Similar to broadcasting and targeting, this means take some actions that build basic awareness, like tabling and distributing brochures around your community, and other actions that get people more engaged, like house parties or events where you can engage people long enough to get their email addresses or get them curious enough to follow on social media, and finally, events and one-on-one -on -one opportunities that are specifically for joining. The last idea is to tailor your planning tactics, and use of resources for different stages of your co-op's growth. What may work at 75 members may not be appropriate at 750 members or for an established co-op with 7,500 members. There is experimenting involved, but if you assess each effort, you get better and more efficient at membership growth. Ask yourself, who in your group is most successful at signing up new members and what are they doing differently than others? 
How many more addresses in our email list did we get during the effort we just made? How many more Facebook and other social media followers? Of course, how many new members? Did we meet or exceed our goal? Did this seem like a good use of time for the people involved? And the best way I've seen to bring this all together is through micro campaigns. These are three to four week membership pushes organized around some hook, such as a seasonal change, local event, milestone in your co-op, or even just the goal itself as in a 30 members in 30 days campaign. Because these campaigns are quick, they can be a good use of volunteers and staff time and should be designed to build excitement and momentum. Consider a cycle of plan, perform, reflect, and recharge, where a cycle may be eight weeks, two to plan, four to perform, two more to reflect on how the last one went, and recharge for the next one. Lastly, here are some recommendations to keep in mind as you work on your membership campaigns. Be aware of how much information you are providing. Are you able to draw a compelling picture of your co-op while maintaining a clear focus in your membership efforts? Too much information can be as damaging to your campaign as too little. Make sure you have a plan. Write it down, make a calendar of campaigns and activities, and adjust as needed. Don't skimp on training. Train everyone involved, especially the leaders of your membership growth efforts. Check to see if you are engaging in building momentum. If your efforts aren't grabbing attention and yielding results, change them. Try new things and listen to your community and members to learn what resonates with them. Although it can be hard with volunteers, don't forget to empower people to create and innovate and also make sure to hold them accountable for clearly stated and agreed upon outcomes. Maintain clear and regular communication. Lack of communication both internally and to your members and community will hinder membership growth. And of course, have fun. Lots of information in a very short time. Follow this link to an article in Cooperative Grocer that talks about membership growth and find more resources in the CDS Consulting Co-op Library and at Food Co-op Initiative. You can also call or email me if you have questions or want help with getting your membership growth going. Thank you for watching.